Welcome once again to Social Studies class. I'm Mrs. Hoover, back with Pennsylvania Studies Weekly, Pennsylvania Wildlife Section. This week's feature animal is the snowshoe hare. Let's see what information hops out from Studies Weekly this week about this furry little creature. The Promised Land State Park and Bruce Lake Natural Area are a must-visit part of this region. They include about 6,000 acres of woodland and lakes that are full of wildlife year-round. Snowshoe hares, which are rarely seen elsewhere in the state, are one of the many mammals to inhabit this area. This beautiful animal is shy and sweet and it blends in perfectly with its surroundings. It's brown in the summer and pure white in the winter. Snowshoes have about four litters per year, numbering one to nine. They are born fully furred, open-eyed, and able to hop around almost immediately. Rabbits are born blind and naked. Hares love to eat strawberry plants and the bark of trees. According to Algonquian mythology, spirits are white, and the great spirit was often referred to as the white hare. These animals have natural enemies, including fox, coyote, and mink. Even the great horned owl often attacks them. The lynx is its greatest enemy. They are so closely connected that when the hare population declines, about every 11 years, so does that of the lynx. But the hare's biggest killer of all is disease. They suffer from many kinds. Our hairy friend has large furry hind feet. Where do you think he got his name? As we just read, snowshoe hares aren't seen in many places in Pennsylvania. But you can see them in Promised Land State Park and Bruce Lake Natural Area. These are two beautiful places in Pennsylvania and I wanted to show you some pictures of them. So, Promised Land State Park is about 3,000 acres of beautiful forests and lakes. It has two main lakes and several streams running through it. Bruce Lake Natural Area also has close to 3,000 acres of beautiful land and many beautiful lakes. They are both located in Pike County, right here along the northeastern part of the Pennsylvania. And they're part of Pennsylvania's state forest system. Pennsylvania's state forest system includes dozens of special wild and natural areas set aside to protect unique or unusual plants and animals. These natural areas are managed by nature and direct human management and intervention is very limited. They provide places for beautiful views and scenery and protect these special plants and animal communities. They also serve as outstanding examples of natural beauty and they provide recreational opportunities too. So they're places you can go to picnic, hike, camp, bike, fish, swim, or maybe even boat. And the forests of these state parks consists mostly of beech and oak, maple and hemlock trees and many other kinds, but snowshoe hares really like them because they are forest dwellers that prefer the thick, brushy undergrowth of, of plants and, and shrubs and trees. Hares look somewhat like rabbits, but there are some differences. Hares are a bit larger than rabbits, and they usually have taller hind legs and longer ears. Snowshoe hares 
have large furry feet and larger toes than rabbits. And the toes can spread out to act like snowshoes. They can spread out like our fingers to grip and, and they grab the earth. Their feet also have fur on the bottom, which protects them from cold and gives them traction in the snow. And these adaptations provide additional surface area and support for snowshoe hares as they are traveling across snow-topped fields and woods. And of course, their hind legs are what gives the snowshoe hare its common name. And I like this picture right here that I found. You see his little toes are spread out. He was, he's gripping and running across the snow. Snowshoe hares have another interesting adaptation that helps protect them against predators. Depending on the season, their fur can be different colors. During the winter, snowshoe hares are white, which helps them blend in with the snow. When the snow melts and seasons change to spring and summer, snowshoe hares turn a reddish brown. This color helps them camouflage with dirt and rocks. And these changes happen by molting. That means that the white fur falls out and is replaced by the brown fur in spring. Then in late fall, the brown fur falls out and white fur grows in. The fur itself doesn't actually change, it, it falls out and, and new growth comes in. And it takes about 10 weeks for this complete color transformation to happen. Snowshoe hares are nocturnal, which means that they are awake at night, you know, and, and mostly eat at night, following well-worn forest paths to feed on their favorite foods. You're most likely to see them at dawn and dusk. At dawn, when day is breaking and, and night is ending and they haven't gotten to bed yet, or then again in the, um, in the evening when night is falling and they're getting up and starting to move about. They eat many different kinds of grasses, small leafy plants and some flowers. Young aspen, birches and willows are also on their menu. During winter, when the grasses and flowers aren't available, snowshoe hares forage on twigs, barks and evergreens. And in late winter and early spring, they will eat buds that are starting to arrive. Snowshoe hares are pretty fast and agile. And agile means they can change direction very quickly, stop and start very quickly, and they need to be because they are a popular target for many predators. Lynx, fox, coyote, and even some birds of prey hunt this hare. And you can see some of their different predators here. I put pictures of as many as I could find on this chart for you. Snowshoe hares are experts though at escaping predators. They have excellent hearing and are able to detect approaching predators very well. When threatened, a rabbit, for example, typically freezes and relies on camouflage to uh, escape a predator not noticing them. But young uh, hares and, and grown up hares, they use a different tactic. Young hares, if they're, if they're too little, They'll often still freeze in their tracks when they sense a predator nearby. They're trying to escape by blending in with their background. And that strategy works pretty well for them because they have the ability to match whatever their background colors are. But older hares are more likely to use their big feet to flee at the first sign of danger. At top speeds, snow hares can run 27 miles per hour which was very fast when you consider they don't really have long legs. They're not a big, a long-legged animal. And when running, an adult hare can jump up to 10 feet in a single bound. And then in addition to the high speeds, hares use skillful changes in direction and even vertical leaps, which may cause a predator to misjudge the exact position of the animal from one moment to the next. Now, the relationship between snowshoe hares and their year-round predators, including lynx, great-horned owls, 
and northern goshawks is well known by scientists. These and other predators such as golden eagles and other birds of prey depend on snowshoe hares as a food source early in their nesting season. If there are a lot of snowshoe hares in any year, then there are a lot of predators. And if there are not a lot of hares in a year, there are not a lot of predators that year too. And as we read in the article, snow hare populations, uh, snowshoe hare populations dip every eight to 11 years. This means that, you know, about once every 10 years or so, there are not a lot of snowshoe hares. And some scientists think this may be due to a food shortage. Others think it may be due to the diseases like they talked about in the article because they do suffer from many different diseases. But recently, some scientists have said that since a lot of predators, snowshoe hare predators survive when there are a lot of snowshoe hares, every so often the predator population might get so large that it wipes out a lot of the snowshoe hares that year. And so there are not that many born that year. And then that again will affect the predator population because if there's not a lot of food, not a lot of them survive. So as you can see, this predator and prey population is closely linked and interdependent on each other. While the snowshoe hare has great ears to hear predators coming, they are not a particularly vocal animal. They don't make a lot of sounds themselves, but they may emit a loud squealing sound if they are captured. When fighting with each other, they may hiss and snort, but most communication between hares really involves thumping their hind feet against the ground. Like most hares and rabbits, snowshoe hares have lots of babies. They give birth three to four times each year, and they can have one to nine babies each litter but they usually have two to four. Well, that's a lot of babies. Young hares, called leverettes, don't require a lot of care from their mother. Like the, like the article said, rabbits are born blind, they don't have any fur, and they're basically helpless. While baby hares are born with all their fur and ready to go. They grow quickly and can survive on their own in a month or less. So that's less than 30 days, which is really remarkable because, you know, think of you guys, you're nine and 10, but you're not ready to be out on your own. You may have little brothers and sisters there at the house, little babies, they could certainly not survive on their own. But snowshoe hares, give them about 30 days and they are all grown up. As we said at the start of our lesson, Snowshoe hares like to live under pine trees and thick underbrush because it provides them with plenty of places to hide from predators. Unlike rabbits, hares don't build nests or burrows. You know, bunnies will run into a hole in the ground that they have built, but hares don't do that. They live above ground year round. The closest the snowshoe hare comes to nesting is when a female packs down a clump of grass in which to have her babies. Now, if you liked learning about the snowshoe hare and you liked those pictures of the beautiful Pennsylvania forest and you like spending time outdoors in nature, you might want to think about working for the Pennsylvania Department of Conservation and Natural Resources when you grow up. There are many jobs you could do to help protect our environment, protect our forests, natural resources, and the animals that live there. You could, of course, be a forest ranger or a waterway conservation officer, a fish and boat commission employee, a state park manager, or many other jobs that involve working within our forest um, and around these animals. And I can personally think of some fourth graders who I think would be great at all these things. 
Okay, it's time to show what you know. This week, we are going to create a food web. So let's start by drawing a snowshoe hair in the middle of your paper. Then, let's add the foods that the hair eats below and connect it with arrows that show the hair needs these items to survive. Then, let's put the snowshoe hair's predators above the hair and connect them with arrows to show that they need the hair to survive. And our food web will show the many connections among a food web that has the snowshoe hair at the center. Now, to end our lesson this week, we're going to watch the study's weekly video about snowshoe hairs. It reviews a lot of the things that were learned um, this lesson and will help you refresh your memory of some of the facts you could use to show what you know in your food web. So, enjoy the video. While snowshoe hares are rarely seen, they are one of the many mammals to inhabit our woods and backcountry. These beautiful animals are shy and sweet. They blend in perfectly with their surroundings because they are brown in the summer and white in the winter. Snowshoes are most active from dusk to dawn and usually sleep during the day. They love to eat wild strawberry plants and the bark of trees. Snowshoes have up to four litters per year with as many as nine bunnies per litter. They are born fully furred and with their eyes open and are able to hop around almost immediately. This is the opposite of rabbits, which are born naked and blind. Snowshoe hares have several natural enemies, including red foxes, coyotes, lynx, mink, and even the great horned owl. They also suffer from many diseases, which are their greatest killers. Snowshoes have large, furry hind feet. How do you think they got their names? Okay, guys, put that food web in your notebook or on any paper, and thank you for tuning in. Keep on learning and working hard.